viewed a 12.9-inch iPad, I kept running into the roadblock of its towering price. The absolute base model 12.9-inch unit, with Wi-Fi and 128GB of storage, costs $999. That's the same as a MacBook Air. You can upgrade storage in three steps, as far as 1TB for another $400, 4G LTE connectivity adds $150, and then it's $179 to $199 for the standard keyboard case, $299 to $349 for a keyboard with a trackpad, and $129 for the pencil. So let's say you want to go anywhere LTE tablet with a keyboard and pencil. In the 12.9 inch size, that will run you $1,557, about the price of a new 13 inch MacBook Pro with 256GB of storage. If you want a new iPad Pro, I highly recommend the 11 inch model which starts at $200 less than 12.9 inch model and is easier to handle. I'll touch up more over the course of this review. Three good cameras The iPad Pro has a 12 megapixel main rear camera, a new 10 megapixel 0.5x wide angle rear camera, and a 7 megapixel front facing camera. While the main camera takes fine photos, as good as an iPhone 8, the ergonomics are obviously poor for taking photos with a 12.9-inch tablet. And the main camera's primary use is probably to feed those augmented reality apps. The front-facing camera is the same as before, 7 megapixels and f2.2. With added depth information from the IR face recognition camera. HDR, portrait mode, and 4K video recording are all available. It's terrific for video calling, FaceTime, and Zoom. I compare the current iPad Pro with the 2018 model, which has the same main and front-facing cameras but without the wide-angle camera or the LiDAR sensor. The photos are pretty much the same. It's really hard to tell the difference, and differences seem like luck. The new 10MP camera does give you the option of a wider angle, but you can't use it in any of the augmented reality apps I tried. In reality the big new feature is the iPad Pro's LiDAR camera, which uses a grid of lasers to measure distance for augmented reality applications. It's a step above the single infrared beam time of flight sensors that we're seeing on most flagship phones nowadays, and several steps above single camera. You see the advantage clearly when our applications are trying to detect surfaces, rather than having to scan around to create a room map, you can just launch the app tap and place objects. It just works in that great Apple way our on the iPad now suffers not from a lack of hardware capabilities but from a lack of a killer app. I remember a few years ago when R was mostly about Wayfair-like furniture placement apps, 3D dioramas for education, and a few games. That's still the case. The best hope is in broad R development platforms like Augment and Jig, which let businesses or educators put together their own R models for instructional or business purposes. The 12.9-inch iPad's form factor doesn't make R feel like the next big thing. Playing R Angry Birds in my living room was super cool. But holding the large tablet in front of me for an extended period of time wasn't pleasant. It's too big to comfortably hold in one hand whilst wiping with another. The best theory I've heard about LiDAR is that it's a stalking horse for Apple's long-rumored augmented reality glasses. Glasses, not tablets, are the presumed killer device, and Apple has supposedly been working on so.